afternoon. My name is Kirsty Dignam and I am a twat. <laughs> oh, it just feels like I need to get it out there first, just to be as transparent as I can be. I fuck up. I get things wrong. I don't always know what's going on. I can't always find an inner zen. I don't always make sense of this world that we live in. I don't have all the answers. I very often am unable to heal my own body. I struggle with everyday needs. I can be narky. I can be judgmental. I can be aggressive. I can be downright vile sometimes because I'm human and it feels so bloody important to acknowledge that this week before we do anything before we react to know where we're doing that from I am here to look at the energies this week I will use the cards to do so However, I will also be acutely aware of what is going on for me at the same time. And that feels so valuable, so valuable this week to really listen into the messages around us for our own wisdom as well. To ensure that we are physically, physically being in and of our path so that we can see where we're not. So that we can recognise that we're human and acknowledge where we may need help. Acknowledge where we may not be asking or receiving for the help. Acknowledging the energy that help is coming from, not only externally but as an internal re re reflection, re 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 <laughs> reflection of where we're at. There is so much going on. There is always so much going on. You know, we've had that Uranus-Jupiter conjunction. We have a full moon in Scorpio in less than two days. Mercury's going forward. There is meteorites, um, comets in the sky, the dragon comet. There are meteor showers coming where our skies will be lit full of potential and visions and shooting stars and and that's just in the sky, right? That's not counting what's going on around us and what's going on within us as well, which is different for us all, but it is pretty damn extreme. I saw a report from Michelle Knight, uh, the astrologist the other day, saying that we're finally going into Taurus season, which I can really relate to, and I will get back to that. Um, I'm almost hearing that I need to bring a pad and pen from now on because it's going to be so much I may lose what needs to be said. It's not something I've normally done, but Michelle Knight saying that none of us would have got out of this period without being basically a bit of a twat. <laughs> yes, hands up, hands up, 100%, 100%. And my God, it's been horrid. It's been a real journey a real breaking down of identity um, for me which it would have been because my Aries um, is my ascendant so since the solar eclipse there would have been a lot coming up there and it really feels like we can get caught up in the it's happening because of this 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 and this and whilst information is key it is key it's not the whole door it's not the whole journey <laughs> it's key to get us into wherever it is we're going but we must keep going we must keep moving through that what is going on for us if we want to get to the other side of it all and for me this morning the other side of it all actually came through cows <laughs> inviting me to sit down as they were sitting down um to reconnect to the earth on this the earth day um although every day is an earth day right but to really have the emphasis of the importance of connecting to the earth connecting to our physical body connecting to the mother archetype within us whether it's the dragon the mother of dragons in the sky or the very earth beneath us but to really connect to that on our own individual levels and reevaluate the relationship we have with that archetype within and around us for the self, 
Taurus is about the self and it is about those basic needs and it is about acknowledging that they are so important. If we are going to make a difference in this world, if we are going to be here and do what it is we are being asked to do, it's really important that we have what we need in order to do that. And this morning, after going through a real um, <laughs> rights of initiation, it felt like the last 24 hours, real energy, the last 24 hours, a labour, if you will, of all these ideas, of all these wounds, of all these realisations, really going deep into it, really grounding and embodying into what was going on in my body, it came to the, the crunch of self-worth for me. It came to the crunch of not even the fear of loss, which will come up with the full moon in Scorpio, not even the um, things I was feeling that were a bit taboo, the shame, the guilt, again, that will come up, the desires, all of that will come up with the full moon in Scorpio, but underneath it all, yeah, the lack of self-worth that I have and the reactions from that. And that's a painful but necessary place for me to be in. And I share that one because we're all human. And I think that's really important this week. We recognize that no matter what is going on with the planets, the energy seems to be one of compassion and mothering, of nurture, of tending to those wounds that have been reopened, of holding space for whatever is coming up rather than reacting, rather than jumping out there, rather than trying to fix and solve and seek and do, of being with whatever is going on right now, if we want a different outcome. I share that because I too am obviously human, of course, and with the hope of helping other people acknowledge that that's okay, that that's true for us all, that that's life, that's life. You know, there's no shame in that. It doesn't make you less spiritual. doesn't make you less of an X, Y, or Z. If anything, for me personally, and it's a personal thing, it makes you more embodied in all aspects of yourself. My, I'm exactly there, the same myself. But I also share that because it feels very relevant. If we are to stand in our power, if we are to acknowledge what we are here to do on Earth Day, Yes, if we one of the, the greatest things we can do is reconnect to the earth on Earth Day, reconnect to our body that we've been gifted, reconnect to what we're feeling, acknowledging is our feelings, but also her voice as well, reconnecting to that, re-establishing a more united front with our place here on the earth and what it is we do, all levels of it. The earth doesn't say I had a hurricane and now I'm going to judge myself for it. It says this was needed. And there is a real emphasis this week in particular of acknowledging that, yes, on the one hand, we have creation and on the other hand, we have destruction from that um, bipolar world. But together, together, those energies, regardless, create transformation. If we have space for one but not the other, we are limited in that transformation. They are all part of the one sacred flame of the light that is within us all and the more we can bring these things to our awareness, nothing else is really needed. The more we can bring these things to our awareness and acknowledge that they're real for us, the more we're saying to that shadow hidden energy, I see you. I don't need to transform you. I don't need to, by seeing the shadow, it's transforming something. By when we see something, when we perceive something in its entirety, we are seeing it 100% for what it is. There's an acceptance there that will do more healing than any modality you can think of. By seeing something and its truth, whether we like it or not, whether we have our judgments, our, our wishes, our dreams, our, how we would prefer it to be, by seeing something from a heart space, a true space within us, that acknowledgement starts to move things forward. That in itself is transformation. I went to Avebury on 4.20, uh, well, Saturday, and worked with the dragons. I didn't know about the dragon comet. I'd like to say I did. I had no idea about the dragon comet. I did go around the stones as called to stem them with the dragon fork and, and call up some much needed energy. I didn't know why. <laughs> I just did while I was guided, tuning into what was being felt. We don't always have to know the answers but merely go with what we feel and allow those answers to come through our own actions. 
And when I went to Avebury on Saturday, ever since there has been this real rise in energy within me, this real need to stand in what I do. But to do that, to acknowledge why I don't. Yeah, to really feel into everything that is rising and my own judgments around that. And I share that again because that really is the energy this week. It all depends what we decide to focus on. So the dragon comet is a comet. You can focus on the dragon. You can focus on the mother aspect. You can focus on the fact that it was called the devil comet. You can focus on the fact that it's in the sky and doesn't affect us. Really, whatever you choose to focus on this week is going to be mirrored back. Yeah, it's going to be mirrored back for the light bringer that it is for the transformation now needed. And it can be really uncomfortable. There's been certain things I've focused on the last 24 hours and thought, why am I doing this? It's so much easier just to walk away. But actually there was there was almost an obsession there that needed me to look at what was going on. What was going on here for me? And I could say it's because of this person or this situation, or I can go deeper and say, well, it's this wound. It's what happened in my childhood, or I can go deeper into what I feel. And actually by the end of it, it was worth. It was how low my own self-worth had got. And that's a journey that I'm taking individually as a result of that, being very open to that this week. The journeys that we are taking together that are leading us onto our own unique paths. World day, yeah, world earth day. Think of the world card in the tarot. Who are you? In your naked, raw form, 100% every aspect of you. Who are you? There is a place for all of it here as it is. Which is really bad sales on my, on my part, right? <laughs> There's nothing to fix in this moment. Just being with this, everything that you're feeling and that awareness will bring that all to light and start to shift and move naturally. So is there anything else on that? Um, hmm, not that I can think of. Not. I was going to start saying about... Um, one of my eyes is swollen and covered in spots so it's leaving my eyebrow raised and, da, da, da. and there was so much coming up about my own insecurities this week before this video and I think only a certain amount of things need to be shared this week so keeping that fine line between what needs to be shared in order to grow and what is being shared to emphasize and reiterate the same story and why this week really feeling into that and yes I feel a little, a little bit of a little, 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 little bit of repetition, a stutter in the energy, almost a glitch, a glitch in our own timeline, a glitch in our own blueprint, a glitch in our own story. Having the opportunity to get past those glitches this week is going to be key. So really feeling into how you feel when you share what you share. Years ago, as a rebel, right, I would do everything opposite. Tell me I couldn't do something and I would do the opposite. Definitely an archetype that I embodied and loved embodying. And I would share things that people wouldn't normally share because, hey, it's there, it's it's happening, it, it needs to get out there. And it felt like that was my mission. Over the last few weeks in particular, there's a real energy coming up of how do I feel when I share things? And that's coming to light as well. Why am I sharing things? I've had a few dreams over the last 24 hours that have suggested a ending and transformation in regards to the sovereignty of the feminine within us all. And there's many ways I could share that. I could be very in detail what that dream was about, very, you know, and do it for all a million different reasons. But underneath it all, I personally want to get to the bigger picture of it. And it's that that I'm going to share. So finding this week, and there's no judgment there. Trust me, the only judgment I really have is on myself. Um, finding what vision, what picture, what you're being asked to share in who you are. Really, really feeding into that. Really looking at perhaps, I know myself, I've been comparing a lot this week. Really looking into where that comparison is coming from and what it's trying to distract you from. I've been comparing myself this week to situations, energy, people that I'm nothing like. 
nothing like and that really reiterates that story of not being good enough and all the time I can get caught up in that story of not being good enough I cannot get on with what I'm here to do which is actually demanding more worth from me rather than outer worth and inner self worth which is going to take a lot more courage and a lot more strength why not through my actions but my need to receive that this week my need to be embraced by the mother archetype and to have my needs met and to start to glitch through this many, many narratives that I have, many narratives I have around self-worth, around um, needs being met, around connections. Of course, I know deep in my core, we live in an abundant world where our needs are met, where, you know, there is a beautiful flow and a beautiful balance and we don't have to work so hard and we're all light. And I know these things. My experience is human wise have been different so there's a real conflicting energy this week a necessary confliction of energy so that we can rub that creation and destruction up against each other and form that transformation is it comfortable fuck no <laughs> absolutely not it's been really quite tense this week so what do we need how can we nurture how can we mother ourselves with that for me, it's holding my hand up and saying, I'm a twat. It's okay, I'm a twat. And taking that weight off of my shoulders. I see the um, statue with the, um, forgive me, but the man that holds the earth on their shoulders. That's not Earth Day. That's not what the earth needs. The earth does not need us to protect, to heal, to hold her up. Let's face it, the power of that earth, of that living energy, what the earth needs is us to remember that the earth put us here. Oh, that that energy runs through us all, in every way, shape or form, in the rage, in the anger, in the joy, in the happiness, in the elements within us. We talk about dragon energy. We talk about the mother of dragons. We are all the mother of dragons. Mother Mary was the mother of dragons, but we are all the mother of dragons, regardless of our gender, regardless of our beliefs, the dragons being the elementals within us. We are all the guardians of these emotions within us. We have the same energy as the earth running through us. You want to heal the world? You want to make the world a better place? Connect back to the mother. Connect back to the creator, the guardian that you are of your emotions, of the outcome as a result of your human experience, of your place here in the world. Happy Earth Day. <laughs> anyway, on that note, I am going to look into the energies this week, but... I'm going to do it briefly, and I really feel like there's a bit of a shift there, actually. That I love the tarot. I look into the tarot so that we can see the reflection of where we're at, so that we can make informed choices based on that, not to have the outcome dictated to us, but to look at what's going on um, more individually, but the collective comes in with the readings also, but also then to be able to take steps, actions of what may be needed. This is what's going on. This is the energy. What do you want to do about it on an individual basis? However, I myself can feel a bit of a shift with that coming too. So being open to the things that you love expanding this week, giving you chance to return those favours back, that love back, that, that flow back. Okay. There is more to come. And what I see is, you know, when you have the heartbreak, we have the Scorpio full moon, right? Death, transformation, rebirth. You know, when you have the heartache of loss and it leaves your heart that open hole that, you know, someone could just shell through, echo through. And for some griefs in particular, it never really goes back. It never really constricts back down. It's open. It will always be open. And being comfortable in that openness this week knowing that because it's more open, it needs more or has space for more to come through it as well. For ourself included, it's really... Um, so I'm trying to shift over that card, actually. That's the God's honest truth. That's the transparency there. There was an eight of swords underneath it there, our image. 
this Taurus season with Mercury coming forward as well with all of this death, birth and transformation, one of the greatest things we can do is receive what we need as and when we need it. And that is going to come up from how we see ourselves. And we are going to see that we are receiving based on the level that we perceive ourselves. And that could be uncomfortable. We may want to move over that like with the Eight of Swords. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I did there. And then the Knight of Swords here, you know, just trying to zoom through it. Even though the energy feels like that this week, with the dragon energy, with the transformation energy, with the Scorpio, it's water. Okay, so it flows. So finding a pace that's comfortable for you, but recognizing even though Scorpio is a fixed sign. So heads up for those fixed signs. Yes, we're going to take another battering. Leo, Scorpio, that kind of energy. We are going to take another battering. But even though it's a fixed sign, water moves. If it doesn't move, it stagnates. If it stagnates, it becomes blocked. We may be shown where we are blocking that on quite a deep level uh, this week in particular for those that are able to dive on in and see what's going on. And it's not a forced action this week with the Knight of Swords underneath. It's not a forced action this week. It's knowing that we are in the right direction. We're always in the right direction. And just to follow that flow, just to follow our emotions, our insights with curiosity this week, just to really open ourselves up to what is trying to be reflected back to us emotionally on a deeper level. We don't have to do more. We need to be more. Okay. <laughs> I'm really looking at the definition of what we feel being more means. It may not be that we're being more light. We may, we may need to bring in more of our shadow. Keeping that balance. Keeping that balance of the conflicting energies within us. Okay. <laughs> Emperor at the bottom of the pack. My energies this week and how to best... How to best navigate them. Listen to the messages of the earth this week. They're going to be really, really clear. They're going to really guide us forward. And the more we connect to that, the more healing will be available in the sheer union between us and all things. And that will bring forth a far greater harmony. I can see a lion, but it's like a like a little kitten with a lion's mane on and then some sunflowers. Oh, yeah, just really feeling as if the growth is almost a bit too much this week, but recognizing we always signed up for that. So we have the Six of Swords, but the Six of Swords is actually reversed at the bottom of the pack. So it may feel like we're not going forward. It may feel like, oh my God, I've ended up in this again, only in a deeper level, and even on a deeper emotional pain here. You know, not only have I gone backwards, I seem to have gone so deep, I'm not going to be able to get myself out of this. Remember that the Six of Swords is about harmony. And in order to do so, sometimes we do go backwards. And if you can go backwards to a situation or feel as if you've gone backwards to a situation, you have an awareness of what's going on. Therefore, you haven't gone backwards. You have taken the situation you've been in and been able to use it to say, oh, I'm back here again. So you have an awareness. So you are not in the same place. And that awareness is what will unravel things. So it may not quite be in a way that you thought, but movement is movement. Water flows regardless, okay? So really letting go of the mind's way of how that should be and really sensing into what's actually going on this week. Oh, this morning I just thought, shit, really? Really? Am I really back here again? Oh, my God. But actually, on an emotional level, it was so deep. This was right at the core of, of it all, and it was so deep. I wasn't where I'd been before. Yes, the triggers were the same. Yes, the journey was almost the same, but actually, yeah, I wasn't in the same place. There was a real, uh, almost finding the um, jewel right at the bottom of the ocean, that's what it felt like. Okay, so Monday, oh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Overall, well, you can't get away from the Emperor card for starters, and I have to show you this. Uh, 
That's really, really interesting. Okay, so I didn't realise, but my old microphone <laughs> was utilising <coughs> utilising the sound there. Um, and yeah, my computer just let me know that that wasn't going to work anymore. And I can really feel that in my throat, the old voice. Yeah, needing to make sure that I'm being heard, needing to ensure that what I say is clear and really feeling into that this week, ensuring that we are being heard, but by who? <laughs> who needs to listen really to what is going on for you? Is it someone else or is it ourselves this week? Either way, really upgrading the voice, really upgrading our truth, really upgrading. So in um, the Moon Eye Key, our throat is Huascar, it's the shadow area yeah it's the underworld really really going down there and finding our own truth so i want to draw your attention to the card overall in the last video which feels like a lifetime ago now talking about going down deep and finding that hidden treasure within our own psyche within our own subconscious overall the energy this week although it may not feel like it is the nine of cups it is about going really 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 into what is going on for us beyond where we would normally go with a little bit of curiosity it's only an extra little flip of the feet yeah it's only an extra bit of oh I wonder taking our mind out of it and really feeling into what is going on this week there is room to be expanded it is a heart expansion and be prepared for any grief that may rise from that as a result as the very guiding light that's going to bring you out of it all sometimes when we go down into the grief and when we feel into what we have lost we can remember what we loved yeah that can be there and then that light is what actually pulls us out of the darkness so overall yes i did say we can't get away from the emperor energy and it is there at the end of the week it was there in the reading and when i was shuffling the cards and it's there at the end of the week we can't get away from the fact that we are not pawns in someone else's game we are here and it is our turn it's always our turn in in our go in our challenges in our game it is a great opportunity there for us to make that move to acknowledge that that power within us the emperor is the other side of death the emperor reminds us that with destruction comes something different and that that's up to us to ensure that it is different and that is at the end of the week but it feels important to recognize that the whole of this week is about that even though we have the scorpio full moon it isn't actually about death it's about transformation of our own power this week it isn't actually about endings it's about us saying yes or no what are we willing to tolerate from ourselves first and foremost and then others so on the monday we do have the wild card on the earth day which is just beautiful and i always feel like i want to stop there i could actually pack up all the cards and just be done now because it feels like the whole journey has been about figuring out who we are why we're here what we offer Knowing thyself, whether it's a tarot card, a workshop, a relationship, a job, um, a hobby, really, really doesn't matter what you call it. It's about knowing yourself. So how blessed are we to have these situations, even the uncomfortable ones that come up and say, hey, this is who you are. Today, you're yeah, a great beacon of light and tomorrow you're a, a, a twat. <laughs> This, this is all part of it. This is all part of it. But knowing that it's part of the circle of life, it's part of your own medicine wheel, it's part of the wisdom that you gain. One of the biggest things we can do for a world or earth day, healing day, is to heal ourselves and the separations we have within ourselves, each other, and then the world as a result. So how do we do that? By being who we are as creators. I love this deck because it has the platonic solids all around us yeah really recognizing the elementals within us the emotions within us for the creations that they are they're all necessary our thoughts are our air yeah our fire is our spirit our emotions are our water our physical body our actions they are our earth and they're all valid they're all needed to pick and choose is kind of like saying i already want a sunny day for the rest of my life that's fine but things aren't going to grow they just aren't going to grow and eventually even the light will become dark. Yeah, even the light will become restricted. So really feeling into that on World Day. What is the world asking from you in who you are? 
really, really following that. Because on the Tuesday, we then have the Night of Wands. That movement comes from our own beat, our own power. Yes, we have the horses in the background here, but I really sense the energy of the dragon. So there's a, a great belief that horses are the physical representation of what the dragons once were. And having worked with horses, yeah, I can really feel into that. But whether it's horses, dragons, emotions, fire, music, rhythm, sensuality, whatever it is, what guides you, what gives you life, what is your power, what is your beat, your rhythm, your sound, connecting into that on the Tuesday is what's going to give you some oomph, really going to give you some oomph. By looking at where you're not, by looking at where perhaps your energy, your um, attention, your vibration is going elsewhere and really calling that back doing something to call that back, to acknowledge the self-worth that is needed, the emphasis that is going to be on our, our own ability to receive that um, over the next month or so in particular, in order to stay grounded and conceive the changes that are coming through, we must be with what we need. We must meet our physical needs to do that, to bring our energy back from where perhaps it doesn't actually belong. Yeah. On the Wednesday, we're being guided to ensure that it comes back to the heart space with that. To really look at whether or not things are feeding our heart, whether or not they are feeding our light and our love, and how willing we are to receive that. So I can really relate to this card, really relate to this card. One with the obvious, you can hear it on my chest, the, the clearing of the heart chakra in particular, and the... Um, Almost the fluid that I feel moving on my lungs, I, it's not fluid, but it is emotions moving on my lungs, the grief, the, the love that wants to be seen, that wants to be heard, that wants to be received in the everyday things as well for me. When I went to Avebury, I shared with some dear friends my experience and they were, I love you guys, they were like, wow, wow, that's incredible. I wouldn't say I'd lost that, but I definitely stopped receiving that. I definitely stopped receiving that. Instead, I was sharing it, which was incredible, but I wasn't allowing it to go through myself first. So when we think about self-care, when we think about putting our needs first, all that means is we receive first and then we share. Whether that's insights and readings and intuition. So as I said, I can really relate to that. I can really relate to this card and be quite happy to you know, consider that card purely for myself. I'm now sharing it on a video with you guys because if it resonates, it resonates. And that's beautiful. We keep that flow going. But this week, really important on the Wednesday to ensure that we receive. We receive what we share. Otherwise, I can definitely say it. We end up quite bitter, quite twisted, quite and closed down in the heart space. I've definitely been happening to me in the last few months. Absolutely. You know, and then having that courage to go, oh, Okay, <laughs> for whatever reason, my heart's been shut off. I mean, I call it on the twat, but, you know, with compassion, for whatever reason, my heart's been shut off. So, okay, let's just sit with that. Let's just feel into that. Let's just let that open us up so that we can call for what we need. And then have the courage to receive it. Have the courage to receive it ourselves first. On the Thursday, we have the Tower card. So, of course, once that happens, yeah, once we're in a more embodied, love-filled place, and by love-filled, I don't mean everything's rosy. I mean, it might be, and that's amazing, absolutely amazing. And I need to be more open to that, perhaps, in my own life. But what I mean is to be with whatever is occurring from a place of love and compassion. Yeah, not to get caught up in what's occurring, but how we hold space for that. When we can do that on the Wednesday, come the Thursday, yes, there is change. Come the Thursday, we will receive those lightning bolt moments of old structures. I see ancestral structures here, old structures, old things that once give us security or what we once believed in about ourselves in particular. Yeah, they're going to change. Of course they are. If we, yeah, so, okay, I'm going to use an example my ancestry very much along the maternal line about giving very much beautiful 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 trait to their own detriment and then very much becoming martyrs and I do it all the time all the bloody time and catch myself short and how I catch myself short is because I've gone anarchy and ugh, and sticky and gunky and whatever so really feeling into that 
if I can keep my open heart to that, half the reason I don't do that is because then it's like, right, what I need is X, Y, and Z. And actually, what about me? <laughs> and that can be quite difficult, in particular if you're brought up in an ancestry where it's about everybody else. So whatever changes come through, know that you are being a way shower. Yeah, you are changing so much more, not just your life, but your ancestry as well. But also being acutely aware of that. See how I did that? Made it about other people because that's how I receive. So <laughs> being acutely aware of patterns within patterns within patterns on the Thursday in particular. And just laughing, lightening it up, knowing that whatever is going on is an opportunity to change things. A much needed opportunity to change things. And in the Tower card, we let go of trying to figure it out. We know that it's not working. We know that something has to shift and we open ourselves up to what that might be beyond our own understanding. On the Friday, there's grounding there. On the Friday, as a result, our actions are more embodied. Um, I saw a video by Amanda Ellis. Uh, I think she called the King of Pentacles for the Dragon Comet this weekend. And the reason that I share that is there can be great grounding in looking at the journeys that are initiated within you as a result of others. There can be great grounding in sharing, knowing that we're not here alone, knowing that our actions may very well end up being very similar and very linked to each other because it's all part of a plan that's far bigger than we are. Also bring it back Friday to the individual as well and discovering what it is you need. So in the background here, we have this massive acacia almost records. Yeah. What is it you need? What story are you reading from? Where perhaps have you become almost a little bit complacent to that? With truth comes the contentment of our inner world doing so with a little bit more humor but also knowing in doing so yeah that wild wolf there becomes a little bit more at peace there's more to that on the friday so let's have a little look although i'm then being drawn to look at the six of swords and it almost feels like the Six of Swords is reversed. It almost feels like mentally we feel like there needs to be more to that when actually what is it we see in front of us? Well, we see the masculine grounded. We see the wild wolf loyal and content and we see a wealth of wisdom around us as a result and a beautiful, beautiful physical opportunity almost falling into the lap on, on the Friday. Something beautiful there about taking the um, insides almost back to their more native innate original type energy on the saturday we then have the lovers so we have choices coming on the saturday but we also have the remembrance that on the sunday we still have the emperor the emperor has been there all week it's always been about choices it's always been about our masculine our feminine uniting our relationships with our intuition and our actions as a result, the decisions that we make. I don't want to say karma, but there is going to be some aspects of that this week where we go, oh, fuck, <laughs> that's why it's been difficult. <laughs> so I'm responsible for that, right? I had an incredible sound bath yesterday and one of the um, wonderful souls in the sound bath just said, I realise I'm the one that's in my own way. Yeah, that could really come to light throughout the whole week. And having compassion for that, having humour with that, you know, it's, yeah, if only we could see ourselves from the outside looking in more often, what a difference that would make. And that's the only image that's actually missing on this card, okay? Instead, it's just a red hue of passion, anger, um, fight, whatever that may be, that instead triggers us into action and decisions. But bear in mind, on the lover's card, there is a further figure and it's the angelic figure and it's the higher energies of course our higher self but also the union of our emotions and our masculine together forming another way there's another way on the saturday but it is going to take going into our passions going into our desires really rooting into them really looking at what's being reflected back to us and from us as a result taking responsibility of that and yeah going into what we feel going into what we feel. 
it's very much related to the triple goddess. This this woman has the symbols of the triple goddess on her on her shoulder, very much related to the triple goddess. There's also the element, there's also the Merkabah between their foreheads here. So knowing that the way forward is in shared vision, in shared vision between the feminine, the masculine, between twin flames, between, between each other, whatever you may want to call that, that the way forward is in the vision. Shared by us all. Okay. And on the Sunday, we do have the emperor. On the Sunday, it feels like I've pretty much said everything that I need to say about the emperor here. Um, however, I'm just waiting for that train to go by. I'm being really drawn to the uh, ram's head here and how we've actually left Aries season. On the Sunday, things may come to light that happened a week or two ago or since the eclipse or whatever. And we are being given the opportunity to say, well, every season is done now. It's time to move forward. If we so wish, it's time to move forward. Can't really see that. Yeah. And it's the moving forward. You see the ankh on his arm? That's the source of life. It's the ability to say that happened. It was true then. And that happened. But actually... It's my choice. It's my decision what I'm going to do about that, whether I'm going to move forward or not. And it's that that gives us life in the knowing that we're creating our life. It gives us that that oomph, that inspiration to know that it isn't all about destruction, but creation as well. And that is the message for this week. No matter what is going on, that nine of cups, acknowledging, opening up our heart, opening up our body to receive what it is we now need to move on from where we were, to not keep creating the same things, particularly if it doesn't work for you. If it doesn't work for you to say, actually, I'm being asked to deliver something different here, to follow my own beat, to go with my heart, to allow the changes that are needed and necessary to fall into place, to hold on to what is being asked of me as I make the decisions I now need to take things to the next level, to change the game. It is a bit of a game changer this week, and I say that because of, yeah, the pawn here. Are we going to take our turn or claim that someone else is playing our game? It really is up to us this week. But that does mean acknowledging some not perhaps comfortable areas. So we have one, two, three, Four major arcanas here so the stability does come from not only the major arcanas but the minors because we have four minors as well so four major arcanas here the stability comes from the balance that we have on the world from the recognition that even though there are fates around us that we may feel like we can't control our individual actions all add up to our major experience in our life and really recognizing the importance of that acknowledging our place here on the world is what brings forth the changes that are needed, knowing that we have free will to make the decisions we now require to decide whether we're going to destroy something or create something from it, whether there's actually a difference and how we're best going to move forward with that. For me personally, that's very much in the identity and there may be some massive shifts in who we think we are <laughs> this week and what it is we're actually here to do. Can we be open to that? Can we allow a higher choice to come through now can we trust that can we be guided and recognize that it doesn't mean we're not in the game it doesn't mean we're not part of it but that it's a yeah a co-collaborating energy type thing there well let's look at it on a mate on a minor level yeah, I'm going to put this back in the order it came out. And that feels quite important that the grounding comes from putting things into order, into perspective, into, yeah, into perspective. So what I'm feeling here, is it coming from this moment or is it coming from something that happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago? To, what's actually going on here? Where am I reacting from? Is it coming from a place of work? Is it coming from that being completely open to all parts of who I am, nine of cups type energy? Is it coming from my greatest good, that wish card, that everything that I could ever want for myself? Is it coming from that and for others? Am I reacting from that place or am I? <laughs> is my heart open? Is my heart closed off? No judgment there. But if it's closed off, OK, what do I need? How can I bring that rhythm back? How can I re-inspire myself? 
okay really going back to i shared with a friend the other day going back to what we do naturally often unconsciously particularly since childhood what actually brought us joy giving ourselves permission to go back to that yes getting back to that place may mean that we go to some emotional depths of all the times that we haven't allowed that to happen but remember what's at the bottom of it all remember the whole point of the journey remember why we feel remember why we are here remember the experience of what it is to be human is to find that flame that transformative light within our own heart and to ground it into everything that we provide here in the king of pentacles to allow that wild to come up and say this is who you are this is the story you're here to write amongst all these great novels of time and space this is what it's all about ensure that you are open to that ensure that you are open to yourself and having great grounding in that wisdom. So I'm going to pull one more card. And the reason being is it felt like I really could have finished that on a beautiful spot. And I almost missed it. It felt like I'd missed the opportunity to close things down, to change things, to have completion. And that's that's what it feels like, an opportunity to have completion this week. Or at least that's what we may think it is. And it may not come in the way that we want. It may not be as clear cut as that because water doesn't stop. It carries on flowing. So with that in mind, where are we going? <laughs> the devil reversed. Okay, so really feeling into... And the high priestess is underneath there. I can't move that that out of the way. Really feeling into where we may feel as if things haven't changed, where we may feel as if we just can't shift that energy. Really acknowledging where we may be tying ourselves back this week and where it may not actually be the case. How opening up to who we are, releasing ourselves from our own perspectives of how we think we should be, what it is we think we need, what it is we think we deserve, and just with curiosity saying okay universe let's start again show me take care have the most incredible incredible week and i'll see you soon